Welcome to Unreal Gems. In this video, we are going to take a look at anisotropy in Unreal Engine. This topic is not well documented, and I think this video is going to clear some things up. First, we will look at the physical phenomenon. Next, we will take a look at some examples in Unreal Engine on how to use the tangent pin and the anisotropy pin. Roll intro. Okay, so let's start taking a look at anisotropy, which I think is a topic that has not been well documented in Unreal Engine. So, first of all, we need to know what anisotropy is. It means that some properties of uh, certain material types can depend on direction. In computer graphics, this is going to primarily refer to specular highlights. So, in this case, we need to distinguish between isotropic uh, materials and anisotropic materials. First of all, isotropic materials is the example that we see on the right, and it means that it has a uniform specular highlight in all directions. So as we are switching the camera, the camera position and we are switching the view, the specular highlight stays the same. So taking a look at how light behaves, According to this, you can see the normal specular lobe here, which is what we see in the specular highlights. And you can see that um, it will not vary. It will be uniform in all directions. And that's why we see round um, specular highlights in the normal cases with normal materials. With anisotropic uh, surfaces, we are going to see that they are non-uniform. So that means that they depend on the camera view or the rotation of the object. So it's going to change. The specular highlights are going to change depending on direction. The reflections, so the specular highlights, are going to be stretched across the surface due to the micro grooves or fibers or scratches in the material. So they are going to blur that specular highlight and it is going to be blurred perpendicularly to the direction of set grooves. So that's what you see here. As the direction changes depending on the specular highlight on those micro grooves, you are going to see the direction of the specular highlight change. Taking a look at uh, a sub-pixel diagram of how light behaves, you can see that it more or less can be thought of as this. You can see here that the grooves uh, run along the tangent vector, so you can see it here. So the specular highlight is going to be stretched perpendicularly, so in the bitangent direction. So that's what you see here you can see that the different specular lobes are added up and they blur the specular reflection perpendicularly to the uh, grooves of the surface. So that's why you see the specular highlight stretched when you use anisotropic materials. Okay, so these are examples. You can see that this is a brushed metal. That's why it has those grooves that will stretch that specular highlight. The same thing happens on CDs, hair and other types of materials. We will see examples of all of them in the next uh, slides. Okay, so talking about anisotropy in Unreal Engine, you are going to see that there are two pins that we need to account for. First of all, anisotropy and next it will be tangent, but let's take a look first at what anisotropy does. It will control the level of the anisotropic effect. So this means that as we go from minus one to one, it will make the anisotropy effect more apparent or less apparent. So as you already know, uh, the more regular and close together the emulated uh, grooves are, the more the specular highlight will be stretched along the tangent or by tangent. So in Unreal Engine, zero will be isotropic, so no stretching of the specular highlight. One will be anisotropic and stretched along the tangent, 
and minus one will be anisotropic again, but it will be stretched, so the specular highlight will be stretched along the bite tangent. For this to work, we need to have a roughness not equal to zero. So the surface needs to be a little imperfect. As mentioned before, we need those micro grooves, those micro scratches, those micro fibers for this to work. So if the surface is a perfect mirror, this will not work because there are no imperfections in the micro surface. Okay, so in Unreal, we are going to take a look at some examples of the material pin anisotropy, which controls how much the specular reflection will get stretched. So we can see in the material that it is quite simple. We have a normal material with a base color, a metallic pin, a roughness pin, and then we have the anisotropy pin. Let's disregard for now the tangent. Anisotropy is what we are going to modify here in the material parameters. So let's go ahead and turn it up to positive numbers. You can see how it stretches horizontally in the direction of the tangent, which is not the same as in the example in the theory, in the other slides, but this is how Unreal works. If we go ahead and switch to a negative number, we are going to see how it stretches perpendicularly to the uh, tangent, which is going to be the same as in the previous example in its diagram. So you are going to be able to see that when we switch to negative numbers, it stretches vertically instead of horizontally. You can see in the tangent that we are using the x value, which will stretch horizontally. We will explain later how the tangent pin works and how the different types of maps will work. So zero again is no stretching, so a normal specular reflection. So with this, you see more or less how it works, but this is not the only way. You can use a flow map, which is kind of a anisotropy direction map, which is going to allow us to switch the tangent all over the surface in different directions. So here you can see the anisotropy works exactly the same. If you turn it up to one, it's going to stretch on the direction of the tangent. If you go ahead to a negative number, it's going to stretch it perpendicularly. Zero is again no anisotropic uh, stretching. So let's leave it as is and we are going to take a look at another example. This time you can see another uh, flow map and the effect it has on the guitar. You can see that as we turn down the anisotropy, the effect is less apparent, there is less stretching. If we go to negative values again, it changes the direction of the stretching and zero will make it a normal material with a, a simple specular reflection. Okay, so the tangent pin controls the orientation of the grooves or the direction of the specular reflection stretching. So it is going to be a 2D vector that is going to define the direction of the anisotropic pattern across the material. So we use flow maps or comp maps for this because sometimes it is used for hair also. So the flow map is going to use the red and green channel to define set direction. So this is similar to a normal map. The blue channel is going to be ignored. I, I have set it to one here. And this is a sample of the different colors and what directions do they represent. So here we need to pay a special attention to the UV directions because the tangent originally is going to be aligned with uh, the UV coordinates. So we are going to have a vector coordinates for Unreal from minus one to one. So it is important to pay attention that in textures, the normal range is going to be from zero to 255, which doesn't match or zero to one. So we need to transform them from uh, zero to minus one so the minus one is going to be zero 
in the texture, the zero is going to be 127 or 0 0.5 and the one in tangent uh, space vector coordinates is going to be the 255 or one in the color texture. So you can see here uh, all of the colors and what directions do they represent. You can sample these colors and you can use them in your flow maps. It is really important to take a look at the coordinate origin because as you can see it's on the top left which is quite strange. Usually if you would want to stretch in the direction of the diagonal which would be here you would set the U or the red channel to 1 and the V in this case it's going to be 1 also so be careful with that because as you can see the positive direction is down and usually in a normal coordinate space the vertical direction is going to be positive when going up instead of down. So just be careful and know that this is the convention of coordinates that you need to account for. So this diagonal will be 1 and 1 in each channel or in the tangent space vector coordinates. So you can set the tangent as a flow map, so as a texture, or you can also use constants, so a 2D constant vector. So here, remember, Unreal is going to stretch in the direction of the tangent. We are modifying the tangents using the tangent pin. So this is an example of the last uh, flow map that is going to stretch the specular highlight in this way. We also have other patterns like this one, which is uh, present in toolboxes or sometimes as you could see in guitars or other uh, objects that represents brushed metal. And it will look like this as we saw in the earlier example. We can see it here again and you can see the effect it produces. So we also have, as I mentioned before, anisotropy in the hair. So here we have the hair strands going this direction and the specular highlight is going to be stretched in the perpendicular direction, so this direction. For this, we also need to use a flow map which would look like this, producing the output on the left. So as you can see, we can get really high quality results and quite realistic uh, renders. Okay, so back in Unreal, we can see how we can use the tangent to modify the direction of the specular smearing. So you have two constants appended in a vector and you connect that to the tangent and with that, you can modify the direction of the anisotropy. So let's go ahead and turn it up a little bit. And now let's see if we change the tangents, what happens. So I have horizontal stretching because I'm, I have a one in the tangent. So with that, if you stretch, you are going to see a stretch horizontally and vertically if we go negative, as we expected, because we are using a positive x vector. So that means a horizontal direction. We can take a look at the UVs. You can see that in the horizontal axis, it goes from zero to one. So that's what you see as a red. And on the vertical axis, from zero to green. So you can see the directions that, that it follows. So that's why the one stretches horizontally. If we now switch to the tangent y of 1, you are going to see that it's going to stretch the specular reflection vertically. So if we now go positive, you can see how it stretches vertically, while if we go negative, it stretches horizontally, so perpendicular to the tangent. If we go 1, 1, you are going to see it stretch diagonally, to the right and down, because the, and that's what the positive uh, x and y 
means remember that it goes in the direction of the UV coordinates. So that means right and down, because that's what the positive Y means. If we now switch to a negative X, you are going to see the direction switch the other way. So we can now see the specular reflection stretching on the other uh, diagonal. Okay, so if we now start switching the tangent and increase or decrease the quantity, you are going to see that it does not affect the object. That's because the direction is not changing, only the length of the vector. So that means that it won't do anything. If you want to stretch more or less, you need to use an isotropy. So that's why you don't see any difference. If we now switch the Y, you can see how we can get different directions combining both of them. You can see how we are rotating the stretching of the specular highlights. Again, if we now switch to the vinyl material, you can see the use of a tangent map which is different to a vector. So here we are switching the tangent direction over all of the surface and we are trying to replicate the grooves on the vinyl record. If we switch the anisotropy, again, you can see how it stretches more or less, but the specular highlight stretch follows the direction perpendicular to the grooves in the vinyl. Again, we have to use uh, certain parameters in the texture. We need to choose in the compression settings vector displacement, for maximum quality and deactivate sRGB. In the material we are going to need to make a small change which is that those uh, colors that the map outputs we are going to need for them to be in the minus one one range which the tangent consumes but uh, you know that it's going to come in the zero one range so we need to use a function in order for the material and the flow map to work. In this function, the logic is quite simple. First of all, we sample the flow map, so sample the texture. That's quite straightforward. The important thing comes next. We need to switch from 0, 1 to minus 1, 1. For that, we need to multiply by 2 the color and subtract 1. Again, we need to remove the blue channel, so we multiply by 110 the color, and that leaves us with the output that we are going to use in the tangent pin. With that, you can see that everything is working properly, uh, as we can see right now, and we can switch the tangent as desired. Okay, so look at what happens when we don't use a flow map you can see that the specular stretching makes no sense. So that's why we need a non-constant flow map. And that's why we need textures to drive a different parameter for every point in the surface. And next, we have all of the other parameters which are more common to the classical um, PBR materials. So in this case, we have a base color a metallic map, a roughness map, and an isotropy parameter to choose the quantity of uh, the specular stretching. And we are done. That's more or less the material. The last material that we are going to see is the guitar one. It is quite simple. Here we have a different flow map. We need to choose the proper options. And the material is quite straightforward. You just have to First off, sample the tangent, remap the values, and with that you connect it to the tangent pin. Again, we have an anisotropy pin, roughness pin, metallic pin, and base color. And with that, that's a pretty straightforward material and nothing else is needed. We can now modify the anisotropy. We can also modify the other PBR parameters. And again, we could also choose another tangent map if we wanted to and it will work perfectly. Well, so that has been it for this video. 
As you can see, the anisotropy topic is quite complex in Unreal Engine. If nobody explains it to you, it's quite difficult to grasp. As you can see, there are not a lot of other sources in which we can learn how it works in Engine. So I hope this video has been useful to you. If that is the case, go ahead, like and subscribe. We'll see each other in the next videos. Thank you.